Hello there, and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to cut the second part out, make it out of this piece of 12 millimeter thick aluminium, and it's a uh, 100 mil or four inches. Um, the, the total part is only going to take up 70 millimeters. Drawn the part up in at Cam Jewelsmith over there, and uh, I'll just show so you. So this it. is the the bare piece of aluminium. And I'll run the tool paths. It's quite a simple part, really. And there it is. In actual fact, I'm going to have to modify this because originally when I first drew this up, um, I was going to use 10 mil plate, but I found a small offcut of 12 mil. So that means I need to rerun the tool pads, which is very simply done. This is uh, Atcam Jewelsmith. Uh, 20, 2012, 2012. Uh, and I have, I've had this one since uh, 2012. And of course, su subsequently, as Atcam has um, upgraded with newer versions, I've purchased the newer virtues, versions. And now, uh, of course, Atcam has a new name, and that is Cavcom. I will leave a link below this video so you can go and purchase Cavco yourself because it's a damn good program. Okay, so we're going to tool pads, spot drill in, drill in, cut out, and we'll edit this one. Let's see what I've done here. Ah, finish depth, 10.5, and that should have been 12.5. I like to go through to the other side. What I do is I put a piece of wood underneath, or hardboard or something, and I cut through to that, so I get a nice clear cut. Apps, two, 12. 12 mil thickness, okay, it may do that. Calculate now. Okay. Let's run that one. Okay. That's uh, now gone all the way through the material. So before we can start doing a job, you need to home your machine. Now it's very simply done in Mark III. Just press Riffle. And in Mark III, you'll see that uh, it's referenced now X, Y, and Z in the machine coordinates. Okay, so I've put my piece of material on the bed now, and I've lined it up nice and square. But the, the last job that I used this for, which was machining that um, brass medallion, um, of course I, I've had the spindle set low down in its holding, so now I've got to raise it back up. So the first job I've got to do now is to set the X and Y zero on this corner here and um, then we'll set the Z with the setting tool. So let's jog over to this corner.
Maybe we get somewhere close. I've got plenty of material here. This is 100 millimeters wide and we're only cutting an 80 millimeter piece so I'll, I'll actually take it onto the material a bit. So we cover everything and that's, that's, that's fine. So I'm going to set the X and Y zero there. And you've all seen how I do that. so. So now we'll raise it up and move it onto the material here somewhere and we'll um, use the Z height tool setter. And that goes something like this. And we're ready to go. Okay, so here we go for the spot drill. to show you now um, I don't see many people doing this uh, on the internet actually they don't show you these little little things and that is because the, the travel of this is uh, 90 millimeter uh, which is just under four inches um, so you to get the, the, the reach of different tools you need to alter the spindle in its housing, the, the length, and this is how you do it. You slacken off these bolts here, and a good little trick that I've learned over the years, I've got one here somewhere, and that is, uh, let me just move it over to one side, I'm going to show you a couple of little tips now about altering the spindle in its mounting. And one of the simple things is you get an odd piece of block of wood and you put underneath the tool. Don't put your fingers under the tool because they, sometimes they can be unpredictable and this can sl slide down and this weighs about 8 kilos or more and it'll go straight through your finger. 
So slacken these off. Okay. Now what I do is I put my hand underneath it there like that. Okay, so the the chuck or the, the shaft is between those fingers. Okay, you just take the weight of it and get a screwdriver or something like that. Just in, in, in here and just wedge it open. A bit more. Yeah. Sometimes it can be a little stubborn. Uh, might be a little bit too... That's fine. Because I've got to take into consideration the retraction off this as well. So do it up at that. But notice, never get your fingers underneath it. Do them up firm, do these clamping bolts back up firm, but don't over tighten them because the threads in here are going straight into the aluminium body and you can strip them. I haven't done it, but I know people that have. Okay, so that tool, let me make sure that tool is tight. Sure it is. And that's a six millimeter end mill in there. Two flute. So we'll put the next code in and uh, off we go again.
and this resulting mess <laughs> is the only drawback of machining aluminium and certainly cutting parts out um, with a CNC router because it's it's very fine small chips and it sprays it everywhere and it gets all over your machine and I use WD-40 as a cutting agent that's what you see me squirting on there um, I also use air because if you don't clean out the track when it's cutting it out it'll just snap the tool off and you'll also notice during the drilling process I only had this running at 5000 rpm which is the lowest it'll actually cut uh, because you go lower than that and you don't have enough torque uh, in the motor these are sort of high revving and the torque band is quite up high of say from 10,000 up so um, and, and this is a 2.2 kilowatt spindle too so do you think this looks anything like that? <laughs> that's how to cut a piece of aluminium out so and, and you know this is as it comes off the machine I have deburred the, the holes but quite clean when it comes off it's not bad at all actually you can I can just feel a little bit of an edge there which I'll take off with a bit of bit of paper but uh, pretty good <laughs>